Shabbat Shalom. On Sunday, this coming Sunday, the 30th, it's um, going to be the evening of Sukkot, or the Feast of ta Tabernacles, or some, or the Feast of the Ingathering. It was one of the three high holidays of the Jewish people. And one of the things about Sukkot, among many other things, people would construct these booths and um, will stay in those booths. Um, Sukkot was a, one of the festivals of the harvest, the ingathering of the harvest. Um, and as with many of the festivals, there were shadows towards um, the coming of the Messiah. It was believed by many rabbis in those days, and still today, that the Messiah would arrive on the Feast of Tabernacle, on Sukkot. Um, and so, um, there was this high expectation of this Messiah coming and being a part of, of, of the Feast, and also bringing this new dispensation, bringing in the Kingdom of, of God. The scripture that I, uh, I want to share with you is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 30, 37 to 38, um, where Jesus is now uh, teaching, uh, in the beginning he wasn't going to come into Jerusalem, in, 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 that, in that it wasn't his time, um, but then after discussion with his disciples, he comes into J Jerusalem and he shares this with um, the disciples. And verse 37 says, On the last day and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Because up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. What, what would happen is that um, there, was a, there was a custom in, in, in that, that time of the Feast of Tabernacles where the priest will leave the gathering, will go up to the temple, he will go through one of the gates of Jerusalem, the water gate, um, he will go towards the pool of Shiloh, and then he will stand... Uh, he will hold his golden pitcher, uh, get water out of the, the, the pool of Shiloh. Uh, he will return back into the temple. The trumpet or, or the shofar will, will sound three times. Uh, people will be uh, um, holding um, this branch and, and this fruit in their hand. And um, the water will be poured into this funnel, into this tunnel, and it will go through um, this little um, area. And as the water would flow, and the people who were holding the lulav or the branch, probably a palm branch in, in the one hand, in the right hand, and, and a fruit of one of the first fruits um, of the harvest in the left hand. Uh, probably something that was called a netrog, or sometime um, a pomegranate. Um, they will hold it, and they will shake it, and they will recite Psalms 113 to Psalm 118. And as the water gets poured out, they will say, lift up your hands. It was great excitement. There was such a, an expectation of the Messiah being, uh, coming and being revealed to, to the people, and so Jesus stands in the midst of all of the celebration, Jesus stands in the midst of all of this expectation, um, and, and here he says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me, um, for, for out of them will come streams of living water, out of, out of those people who believe in Him will come uh, uh, flowing uh, streams of living water. I, I would have given anything if I was having the ability to go back in time to be a part of this this excitement and this this uh, this custom and seeing Jesus 
standing there and there's a water being poured out uh, saying that he is the, the stream of living water. What, what is the implication of Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, for, for us who believe in, in Christ Jesus, for us who know that Christ has already come and, and He will come again, what is the implication in this harvest time moment? Well, have you ever felt the need when you're thirsty for water? And um, when your tongue literally sticks to to the back of your of, of your your palate, um, your mouth gets extremely extremely dry, and you almost try to to bring saliva saliva into the front of your mouth, and, and and it just doesn't help. It just your mouth feels like it's going to literally dry and fall and fall off. Um, and have you ever felt that thirst? Jesus says that He is that living water. Not only is He the living water for physical nourishment, but He is also the living water for spiritual nourishment. We, we sing the song, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, His grace is sufficient for me. Um, yet, He's more than just a provider. He's a nourisher, be a comforter, and if you ever felt that thirst, and you get that drink, and you quench your thirst, and that water or that juice just brings that relief to your throat, to your palate, to your, the rest of your body, you, you will know what I'm talking about. Jesus, as a living water, is a sustainer of life. He says he's the author of our life. He's the Alpha and Omega, he's the beginning and the end. And in him we should find rest. He says, Come all to me who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In him we should find a nourishment and a quench for our thirst, our spiritual thirst, in looking for that which we look for within our spirit. So, may the Feast of Tabernacle on the 30th be an expectation, an excitement in you, not for the first coming of Christ, but for the second coming of Christ. And as you hear his words to you, he says, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture said, streams of living water will flow from within. So not only is he the sustainer of our, our life, not only is he the provider of that water, but because we are a part of him, and because we are in Christ, that living water, that spirituality, that ability to understand the way of Jesus is available for us right now. May you experience the excitement of the harvest time. May you experience the excitement and the knowledge of knowing the presence of Jesus in your life as He is the source of your life. Amen.